I am here to tell you all about how my carry-on situation worked for my trip to Amsterdam. Um, in case you haven't watched the previous video on how I was um, going to try to do <laughs> carry-on for the first time ever, carry-on only to a trip to Europe and back. Um, we decided once and for all we're doing carry-on only. This was my first major trip trying to do that. And I will link the video probably up here in a card. Um, and you can watch that too when you want to or maybe before this one, whichever. But I decided to pack everything I would possibly need for a trip to Amsterdam into one bag that could fit in the overhead compartment. And then I used my brand new Speedy, be not Speedy, Keep All um, 45B. And I loved every second of using that bag. So all of my things for the week were in the overhead bin in a rolling suitcase um, and in my Speedy, I keep wanting to call it a Speedy, my Keep All 45B. So anyway, um, I showed how I packed those bags in various videos I will <laughs> put up there. But what I was packing for specifically was one week in the Amsterdam area of the Netherlands um, and my phone weather app told me that it would be anywhere between about 50 degrees, like 47 degrees to possibly like 71. But most of the time it was supposed to be in the like high 50s, high 60s. And there would be sunny days and there would be some rainy days and intermixed stuff like that. So I was thinking more springtime, you know, shirt, throw a sweater on kind of thing. Well, it didn't exactly work out that way. Um, I brought several tops and just a couple sweaters. And in hindsight, now that I know what the weather actually was, it would have been better if I had more sweaters and just a few tops. Um, there were days that I was wearing a tank top, a long sleeve top, a sweater over that, a cashmere scarf, my jacket, and gloves. And there were days it literally snowed. <laughs> I'll have uh, I have some video of that if you watch some of my Amsterdam videos that would be in my part three which I think is the last one it's not that exciting so anyway um, it actually snowed on us at, at one point so we were cold it was chilly it was still very much fun we had a lot of sunny days we did have some rain but you just bring an umbrella and you trudge through so when it comes to packing um, I can't see that I would do anything differently because in all honesty I just was going by what the weather said and I was preparing for warmer, and I was preparing for colder, and I knew I could mix and match all of the things. Turns out I did not wear my white pants, not even once. I did see some people wearing them, but I didn't wear mine. I just, it, I don't know, everything was just cold, and that just didn't seem right to me. So I didn't wear my white pants. I didn't have to bring those. And I wore those knee-high boot things that I wore on the plane. I wore those every single day. I did not ever wear any of those other pairs of shoes that I brought. And the reason being is because it really wasn't warm enough. My feet would have frozen and, it, and those other boots were comfortable. I didn't have to worry about my feet getting wet. I could walk wherever and be comfortable. So I was in those boots every single day, including on my dinner cruise, which was my dressiest, dressiest <laughs> evening, which it wasn't really dressy, you know. I mean, it was casual, you know, nice casual is basically what they told you to dress. So um, it was nice. It, it worked out well. I did have to, you know, wear, re wear a few things. Not a problem. I did end up coming home with several things that I did not wear. But, you know, I'm thinking it through, like, what would I change? What would I do differently? And there's really nothing I could have done differently because I didn't know what the weather would be like. If the weather had done what it said it was going to do, that would have been perfect. If the weather was even warmer than what it said, I could have made that work, too, with what I had. Um, and being that it was colder, I just had to layer those things and rewear the sweaters a couple times. With scarves, was key actually um a scarf will keep you warm when you know and it's a simple easy thing to pack so that will keep you <laughs> warmer than you think just having something cuddly around your neck so though the scarves were just a lifesaver i loved every second of those so i i think that you know doing the whole carry-on thing um it worked it worked and i can continue to make it work and continue to tweak things to make it better one of the things that i i purchased before the trip thinking i might need are and i'll insert a picture here somewhere are the, um, I think they're by Ziploc brand, but I'm not sure, no, they're Samsonite brand. Those like zippy type bags where you put your, your clothing in a bag and then you can use either a vacuum cleaner to suck out the air and smushes it down, or you can roll and the stuff and that sucks out the air and keeps it flatter and you can put more things in your suitcase. I did not do that this time, but I can see where that would be really handy to do if I had to be gone longer or I needed, you know, it was a totally winter type 
time I needed to, I knew I needed to meet, bring more sweaters, um, I think those would really help too. So keep those in mind. I have not actually used them. I can't really say how they would work for me. Plus another thing I can imagine doing is taking a couple of those bags with me and then schmooshing down my clothes to save room for possible purchases that I might have um, made on the trip, whatever upcoming trip I have. Um, or those bags could be used for your dirty laundry. I have a different bag that I put dirty laundry in for mine, but you know, to smash it all down leaves extra room. It's always a wonderful thing. So um, when it comes to the fact of purchases, I did not end up purchasing anything, not one darn thing the whole time I was there, which is absolutely fine. I did spend one evening in bed looking at all the different prices for the Louis Vuitton um, and Chanel items uh, in euros. And even with the, the VAT tax and so forth and all that thing you have to do, um, it would have been cheaper for me to purchase a few things there. But there really wasn't anything I felt I really had to have and had to go through the whole customs declaring and all that. So I just, it, I didn't need to. So I did not buy anything there. Um, but I will tell you, it was tempting at first because I was looking at how much um, I would save. And <laughs> yeah, that was nice. So um, anyway, good thing is that my husband does travel. And every once in a while when he goes to a country, um, I can ask him if he has any extra time in his schedule on business to pop to a store and get me something. Um, he's done that once for me. So I always know in the back of my mind it's possible if I really want to save on something big. But in general, everything worked out really well with the carry-on large, or, you know, the, the largest I could get of the what fits in the cabin in the overhead co head compartment. That worked out great. So as for my Keyball 45B, I basically fell in love with it. Absolutely fell in love with that piece 100%. It is a workhorse of a piece. I can totally tell that that thing is going to be with me forever. Um, on my trip back, my daughters and I flew back when my husband went on to um, England. My, husband, my daughters and I flew back, and so I was having to put my, my suitcase up in the overhead by myself and stuff that up there and things. I was in business class, and so they didn't have really a seat in front. The first leg of the trip to the Netherlands. I We were in a, a coach seat to Washington DC, so I know it does fit under the seat in front of you in coach for sure. But in the business class area that I was in in United for the longest part over the ocean, you cannot keep things like with like that big bag I could not keep with me. So I had to take out pouches. You saw my pouches of things that I really needed during the flight, headphones, whatever, books, and put those in these little cubbies that they had. And then I had to put my keep all up in the overhead compartment for the remainder of the flight. There was a time when I did have to try to get that down to get something that I needed. Um, and it was a time when everyone was sleeping and I was trying to be so quiet. It was difficult, but I managed it. But um, you, I've learned, basically I learned then, and that was when it showed me that you can't, at least I can't, have one of those items, expect to use it and love it and baby it. It's just almost not possible. I decided right then and there, I was going to use this piece to its fullest extent. You're yanking it out of there as quiet as you can. Regardless, you're still squeezing it through. You can, I, can just, I could just tell that the top of the thing was scraping along part of it, and I just gave up right then, and I thought, I'm not gonna fret it. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm going to use this piece. It will be with me forever. I don't have to worry about resale. I don't have to worry about that kind of thing. I um, can see myself using it as a footrest when I'm in coach and I have it in front of me. Um, the seats are just such that I'm 5'5", five, 5'5", five, five five inches, and they're such, such that I always want something under my feet. Like, I really wish my feet could prop up on something. So many times on a flight like that, I will prop my feet up on whatever I can, whatever bag I'm using. I will use that as a footstool. I know for a fact I will, and that's all there is to it, and I'll be happy to have it. So, my plan is to use that bag, use the heck out of it, and all the little maybe possible bits and scrapes that it may end up getting, They'll just be part of my life and part of my travels. So that's my plan anyway, but I loved using it. It fit a smaller, I used my Duomo crossbody bag as my purse the whole time I was there. So that fit in the keep ball. And then I also had all these other pouches, as you'll see, and like I say, I linked it in the video, um, or I showed it in the video of different, like my headphones and things, my medications. Um, things I just want, really wanted to have on my person right there, even though the other bag was close enough with me, but you know what I mean, those type things were with me. My Kindle um, for my reading, um, I had a magazine or two, I had a, a shawl, a, you know, like a little cashmere blanket shawl thing. I had my little eye things because we were spending the night on the flight, <laughs> things like that I had with me right there in my key ball, fit perfectly. It fits, um, you take the, the suitcase and you have the handle up, 
I'll have to show you how I do that. I will, I will somehow film a little bit of that and I'll put that in here too. How I take the key ball, put it on top of the rolling suitcase, and I rack the handles through and, and over so that it stays put easily. Um, and you have to be one of those people who you want to use your bag to its fullest potential and you don't have to worry about, if, you, if you're the type to worry about the handle and oh my gosh, it might get a wrinkle or something, this is not, this <laughs> trick is not for you. But I learned how to get that to work so it just went perfectly, I could just roll my stuff and go. Um, yeah, I'll film a little bit of how I do that and I'll, I'll stick it in here somewhere. So basically, I think I might be converted to a carry-on only person. I really am. I don't, you don't have to wait for your luggage to arrive. You don't have to worry as all the luggage starts coming out and everyone's getting theirs and you're thinking, is mine coming? Is mine coming? Because <laughs> mine many times did not come. Um, and for all those people who ask questions, I always got my luggage back. Um, usually it was like delivered to me the next morning at the hotel or something like that. Um, so it all worked out beautifully. United did a fantastic job of getting my things to me. The one time that I lost um, anything, meaning that something was stolen from my bag, was not on a United flight. It was in Iberia, Iberia Airways, Airlines, um, going from Lyon, France to Barcelona, Spain. Um, my bag did not arrive, and then when I finally got it to my hotel the next day, that was missing from it. So it could have happened in the flight time. It could happen with the person currying it to the hotel. It could happen when it was waiting in the hotel for me. I have no idea. So I can't blame anybody and I'm not wanting to. But in general, I have had my bags go different places on United Airlines, but it's always been returned. They've always been returned to me with everything in there um, when I've flown United. So I just want to put that out there um, that that's been the case. So in general and in closing, Thank you so much for watching, and I will continue to try to tweak my carry-on situation. I am going to um, California in June, so I will be flying again, and I'll see what I do then, because I'll have to have better outfits. I'll talk to you about more about that later, and um, how I'll mix and match and make that work for me, since I need to try to look a little more presentable, whatever, um, if possible. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.